Hey, welcome back to the show. Um, I have always been proud of the transparency that's come with uh, the Preacher Boys podcast, and I've always felt really uh, open. I feel like I've worn my uh, thoughts and emotions and feelings on my sleeve in a lot of ways doing this show. And so the topic I want to talk about today uh, is really coming from that place. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about just my personal um, life and personal insights, personal beliefs. And um, I, I don't do this often on the show, um, but I know I've been outspoken about uh, my belief systems, my guiding principles and things like that on the show before. And so I don't feel like this is out of character for what the show is. Uh, but it is a, um, it is definitely going to be a difficult episode. Um, I don't know how long or how short this will be, but I feel like, uh, while I don't owe anybody, uh, any information about, uh, what I think or what I believe or, or things like that, it has been such a part of the identity of the show and of myself as a host that I just felt uneasy, uh, continuing to produce episodes without addressing this and, um, I'll go ahead and talk about it. So long story short, uh, I would no longer consider myself a Christian or a believer or fill in the blank, uh, any of those titles. Um, I'll kind of give some context as to the why and the what, but that's kind of the short version. Um, it's probably why you clicked on this episode or this video, because I indicated somewhere in the title that that was the case. Um, and like I said, I don't owe anybody that information. And I want to say from the beginning, this has no bearing on the issue of abuse within churches. This has no uh, bearing on the authenticity of the problem of abuse within churches. The only reason, like I said, that I'm bringing this up is personally, this is what I feel. And because I've been outspoken about where I'm personally coming from before, that's influenced the type of conversations I've had and the way that I presented this, uh, I, I do feel like I wanted to share it. But if you're not interested in hearing that perspective, I totally understand. If you're not interested in hearing uh, anything about me personally, you're just interested in the weekly stories and things like that. That's totally fine. You're more than welcome to skip this. And, uh, this isn't going to be something that gets brought up on every single episode. Uh, but it is something that I did feel like I needed to address. So really, um, when I started the preacher boys podcast, uh, I was devoutly Christian. Um, I was not attending church, um, I was not uh, part of a local body, um, but that was out of frustration with abuses and things that were happening within churches, and I didn't feel comfortable for a variety of reasons attending a local fellowship. But personally, um, I felt very strongly about my faith. I was a strong believer. I was took the Bible literally, um, and for all intents and purposes, really believed um you know, as strongly as ever. Um, I would say I was a fundamentalist, but not in the sense of being hateful and cruel and things like that. Um, and really what's chipped away at my faith over the last two years has been really the nature of the stories that I've covered on the shows. Um, and look, I, I want to say this too. I know there's going to be people who feel as they listen to this episode, the desire to message me, write me an email, send me a, a, a you know, fill in the blank. Um, you know, just put some thought before you do that. I, I'd rather not get 30 or 40 of the same messages, or um, I, I really don't want to just get rebuttals to what I'm saying uh, because I'm not presenting an argument. I'm just sharing my personal experience. And, um, you know, really, as I started doing the podcast, as I started seeing these things happen, uh, there were many things that started to continue to chip away at a faith that had been hit with the sledgehammer by many circumstances that I've talked about on the show previously. And what's really taken place over the last couple of years um, has been a, a situation where I've looked at Christianity and as a believer... I would look at situations and be frustrated that different organizations or different people or different leaders didn't represent what I believed was true Christianity, quote unquote, true Christianity. And as I've done this podcast and as I've received messages from pastors and spoken on the phone with pastors and dealt with survivors of abuse and looked at organizations from the Southern Baptist Convention to the Independent Baptist world. 
true Christianity has become um, more and more elusive and more and more blurred and more and more marred. And I just really found myself starting to question if quote unquote true Christianity uh, existed. Um, and to give a 10,000 foot view, when I was in high school, I've talked about this before, um, I was a devout uh, independent Baptist. Um, I I believed it. I, and this is something that's really important for people to understand is, this isn't this isn't me waiting and going. Oh my God, I need an excuse to get out of this. I loved it, and it wasn't until a sexual predator was shuffled to our church that my bubble burst. And I think now that's a good thing that my bubble burst. But it was a horrific circumstance in which it burst. Uh, the sexual predator was relocated to our church. The leadership of that church did not care. They still don't care to this day. He's still on the platform to this day, and. By the time I was graduating high school, I was done with the denomination and very much so done with Christianity as a whole. Um, I still felt some obligation and responsibility, but my goal was to do my one year Bible college, go move somewhere across country and, you know, find a church I could go to occasionally. You know, I was on the on the way out. Um, And I think I've said before, I think Bible college would have been a nail in the coffin. Instead. I went to Fresno Church in Fresno, California with Pastor Joshua Ermler. And that church was something that up until recently, I really looked to as like a spiritually formative time for me. It was where I felt like I got to see true Christianity. I keep hitting that true Christianity, real Christianity, uh, really understood the quote unquote gospel for the first time. Uh, Josh Ermler was very much a um, kind of spiritual guru that I really looked to and felt like I was seeing what all the abuses and all the things that were happening within uh, that world, um, you know, they weren't happening here. And there wasn't this legalism and all these things that were just different, you know. And so that really made me a far more radical believer in the sense of I believed the gospel to be true. I felt like I had a real walk with Jesus. I truly, as much as I could possibly feel it, I felt it so much so that uh, two years into being in Fresno Church, I actually quit my job right before I was about to start actually making real money and joined a missions organization and worked with that organization. Uh, I wanted to preach, I was, I, and I did. I wanted to serve orphans, and I did, and got married, and we went to the mission field for a few months, and, you know, a series of circumstances happened that brought us back, and, you know, there was just a desire to serve and to uh, really be a part of propelling the gospel and sharing this beautiful relationship that I felt like I had. And what's happened throughout time, and again, I could go more detailed and I'm sure I'll probably get questions about this and I'm, I'm happy to do a part two and kind of break this down. But what's happened as I've done this podcast is I've seen so many people connected to the circles that I've been part of and connected to, uh, you know, uh, circles that are really praised within Christian organizations. And I just, I keep seeing them fall and collapse. And, you know, I look at, I look at the timeline of my experience within Christianity and I grew up within a church that was incredibly toxic in a lot of different ways, some ways that I'm still realizing now, um, a church that sheltered a predator and still harbors a predator there and has him on the stage. And, uh, because I was not okay with a predator being on stage, I lost close relationships with my youth pastor who was like a father to me. It did damage to my actual relationships with actual family members. Um, It has made it to where it's uncomfortable for me to even walk onto the campus that I grew up in for 18 years. And that was the first piece of my religious journey. Then the place I went to recover from this place, uh, the leadership there, uh, or I shouldn't say leadership, but Josh Ermler, who I considered a spiritual guru, discovered obviously a few months ago that, you know, he was hiring prostitutes and that, uh, you know, they ended up having an open relationship and there was a lot of 
duplicity. And so I went from one thing I thought was very real to, and it collapsed, to another thing I thought was very real, and it collapsed, to joining a missions organization. Uh, and I should say in the meantime, too, the documentary I, I uh, worked on in Fresno was produced by Austin Gardner, who uh, allegations have come out that he was uh, sexually abusing and physically abusing children. And then went and worked for a missions organization. And the the guy who was running that missions organization was extremely financially abusive, mentally manipulative, um, it, complete lies about so many different things. Uh, you know, left that, had another falling out with someone who I'm very good friends with now, but it was a very horrific period for me. And all of it just hacked away at my faith because, again, the Bible's thing is always judge things by their fruit, judge things by their fruit, judge things by their fruit. And time and time again, I was just seeing fruit that was rotten. The fruit of Christianity just seemed rotten. And then fast forward to starting this show and the horrific things that are said uh, about me for doing this show by pastors, uh, the messages that I get, the phone calls I've had, the sermons that have been preached where I've been mentioned. It, it just, I just keep seeing people going, if this is true Christianity, I don't want it. And I'm also seeing people who are claiming to be part of true Christianity, who are leaving fundamentalist circles, who are acting just as cultish and toxic as, you know, those within it. And you know, and it's not everybody. There's good, there are good people. I'm not saying that everyone who's a Christian is an enemy. I'm not, I'm not saying that at all. I'm good friends with many, many people. Um, but for me, it's just gotten to a point where if the Holy Spirit is real and if the gospel is transformative and changes people, then why am I not seeing more transformed people? Um, why am I not seeing more people who claim the gospel uh, acting differently than literally anybody else in the world. And in many cases, acting worse than many people within the, the quote unquote world. And so, uh, and, and I apologize if this is messy or, or, uh, you know, seems out of order, or, uh, but, but for me, it just, it's gotten to a point where I, I keep talking about this quote unquote true Christianity and this true gospel and this real version of what this is supposed to be. And I feel like the minute that I get my hands on what it is, it, I realize it's corrupted. It's rotten to the core. And so for me, it, it really chipped away at my faith in a big way. Um, and then also just, I don't want to go into a big thing about this, but just so many questions for me, that just can't be answered. Um, I interviewed Amanda Montel, who wrote the book Cultish. Um, our episode actually drops uh, Sunday. And, you know, one of the things she talks about in the book is thought terminating cliches. And I just realized that so much of my faith was safeguarded by thought terminating cliches. It was, uh, for those that don't know, thought terminating cliche is a semantic stop sign. It kind of stops your thinking, stops you from identifying cognitive dissonances. And there were so many things where I would do that, where something really horrific would happen in the church. God works in mysterious ways, or uh, God is the judge, or, um, you know, you're just bitter, you know, <laughs> uh, you need to be forgiving. And, um, you know, uh, when I was in Fresno, it was, you just don't seem to really understand the gospel. It was just always the problem was me and not the thing that I was critiquing or asking questions about. And... Really, once I started identifying those thought terming cliches, the rest of my faith really crumbled very quickly. Um, and again, I'm happy to give more details about this. If you guys have specific questions, like feel free to comment, you know, wherever this is shared uh, and ask there. I don't really want to get a lot of personal DMs and things like that. Um, it's just too much to dig through and, and think about, but I'm, I'm happy to do another video and kind of talk through it. Um, but for me, it just got to a point where you know, I'm not angry. I'm not, I just, I can't live in a way that's incompatible with what I actually believe. And I just don't, I just don't believe it anymore. Um, and you know, I, I'm not saying that I know something else. I'm not, and this is the, this is the part that's really important for me to, to say is, you know, 
you don't need to jump from one thing to another. Um, for me, uh, I didn't just jump from Christianity, fundamentalist Christianity, to militant atheism. I don't even like saying the word. Um, I don't like the label of it because the reality is I just don't know. Um, I talk to people who are very intelligent. I talked to Beth Allison Barr, who's a medieval historian, ardent believer. You know, I, I, I am compelled by things that she says. Um, I listen to other people, you know, who are non-believers and very compelled by certain things that they say. And I'm okay for the first time in my life. I feel really okay living in this kind of gray area um, of, I don't know. And again, I'm not telling people this is what they should believe. I'm not telling you if you're listening and you're one way or the other, you know, to believe differently. But I would say uh, one thing that I that I have seen is that a lot of people who've gone through this journey, and I'm not the first person to deconstruct their faith or to leave the faith, is many people leave one version of fundamentalism in exchange for another. And I know when this video comes out, uh, there's going to be two types of fundamentalists that respond to it, and both are going to annoy me. There's going to be people who listen to this episode that are going to write me and say, finally, bro, you're an atheist now. Uh, I'm so happy you left Christianity. Uh, you know, screw those guys, blah, 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 blah. And the toxic atheist fundamentalist is going to respond with great glee at this. Um, there's also going to be fundamentalists who are going to see this and uh, with a different form of glee. Uh, they're going to say, see, I knew this is why Eric started the Preacher Boys podcast, because he was a closeted atheist and he um, wanted to destroy people's faith. And he spent two years doing that. And that's absolutely not the case. Uh, I was as true a believer as you could possibly be. Um, and again, I know people are going to throw out a thought terminating cliche and say, oh, you weren't a true believer. Um, you didn't truly understand it. I did. I, I read the books. I I had the personal relationship uh, as much as can be described. I, you know, I truly ardently believed uh, everything I talked about. Uh, there was no part of me doing this show that was duplicitous or where, you know, it, it just was a slow reckoning with my faith. And, you know, so I would just say, like, this is not cause for, you know, people to distract from the topic of abuse. This is not time for pastors to say, oh, I told you so. And like, let's close the conversation because there's still much conversation we had about spiritual abuse. Um, and this is not me planting my flag and saying, oh, I align with this certain belief system. It's, it's me saying I'm untethered from what it is that I believed. And I am not quick to tether myself to something else. Uh, I'm okay with not knowing. I'm okay with talking to people on both sides of the aisle. I'm still going to have guests on who are strong believers. I'm going to have guests on who are not, um, like I have from the beginning and I'm open to the conversation. And, uh, what I would also say too, is, you know, this is not going to affect the topic of the show. Um, you know, again, I may have certain guests where it comes out or I talk about this a little bit, but I want you guys to know my mission is still ending abuse within churches. And, um, I wanted to do that as a, you know, I'm born again, believer. I want to do that now as someone who, doesn't know where to categorize themselves, but I know there's so many people wrestling with their faith. So many people that, um, you know, again, uh, you know, are trying to deal with this. And I want you guys to know you're not alone. Um, this is something that's been very difficult for me and I'll kind of close on this, but I've said it time and time again, the biggest sledgehammer to my faith was not rock bands or Hollywood or all the things I was warned about in Sunday school. Um, it has been the church, uh, the church, more than anything has single-handedly destroyed my faith and i have no desire to uh, attend a church again uh, be a part of a church again and the quote-unquote gospel has been so marred in my mind and the fruit of christianity has it just feels so rotten to me that i just could not justify um, at this point, aligning with anything in that realm. And that's not to say that, you know, I'm not open to conversations. It's not to say that I'm not open to, um, you know, being proven wrong. I, I mean, there's very smart people that believe the Bible is a, you know, is, is a reliable document and, and have historical evidence that they would point to. And I, I'm still going to be interested. I'm still very interested in, in, and I'm not discounting those people, um, 
but I'm also not going to ignore people on the other side. Um, and I want to be open in dialogue and also know that the truth might be somewhere in the middle. Um, but I wanted to just be open. I know this was a, a kind of random episode, but I felt uncomfortable progressing with the show without addressing what has been an elephant in my room. Uh, something that I feel, especially for the past few weeks, and and really it was some of the stuff that happened with Josh Ermler and with Fresno and with Austin Gardner and with the responses I saw of people, uh, pastors who were gleefully saying, oh, look, your buddy did this. And just the toxic evangelical culture just drove the final nail into the coffin of my faith. And I just wanted to share that. And I wanted to share that that's where I'm coming from. Uh, I know there's some people who are probably going to stop listening to the show um, because they can't see past that. They wanted me to be this Christian champion of ending abuse. And I know there's going to be other people who are unfortunately uh, going to be more happy now because I fall into their camp in their mind. But the truth is, I'm not one to rush into any camp. I'm not one to rush into one area or another. Um, I just want to keep having conversations. And that's really what the show is about. It's having conversations, hearing different perspectives, and uh, being open and transparent on my end. Again, I know I don't owe anybody an explanation for my spiritual walk. I don't owe anybody an insight into my personal life whatsoever. Um, But I felt it was important for me to share because I know, you know, I know I'm a public figure. I know people do look to my show and they do look to me. And uh, that's a difficult position to be in uh, more often than not. Uh, But I want to be honest about where I'm at and just be honest share with you guys. And, um, you know, the reality is now, you know, the elephants, uh, out of the room and, uh, let's end abuse. That's what this is about. Let's end abuse. And, uh, whether that be in churches or anywhere else, uh, this needs to stop and, and people need to stop having their beliefs weaponized against them to harm them. Uh, that that's, that mission is still a hundred percent the same, but I wanted to share that with you guys. If you have any questions, you know, feel free to drop a comment on the Preacher Boys podcast page where this link was shared or on YouTube if you're watching it. And uh, I'm happy to do like a part two and answer some specific questions. But I want to give kind of a 10,000 foot view of, uh, of where I'm at spiritually. But I'm looking forward to this episode Sunday. Uh, Amanda Montel, the book Cultish. It's really, really solid. Uh, I'm so excited to talk with her about it. Um, on for you guys to hear that conversation. It's going to be really awesome. And I uh, look forward to seeing you here on the next episode of the Preacher Boys podcast.